It's Pachata time. I'm Matt. I'm Maggie. And we're going to get into our body rolls. We're going to start off with the very first one. Now, don't forget, if you want to rewatch any of these videos, below we have time descriptions and you can click on different parts of the video. So instead of rewatching the whole thing, you can rewatch parts that you particularly want to focus on the lead, the follow, maybe the breakdown, maybe key points, even the demo, just so you can see what it's supposed to look like. But yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, let's go ahead and demonstrate our closed body roll. We'll start off in a closed position. And we have a basic of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, let's go ahead and break this pattern down. So we start off in our closed position. Anytime we're in closed position, that implies that we have connection. We first have our, our lead hand, and we're connected by pushing forward and to each other, no matter how close or far we are. And then with our bridge arm, our bridge hands, we actually compress the leads compressing the follow towards them, but the follow is going to put their back weight into the hand. So they're going to be pushing slightly against it. So follows, you're always seeking the hand, leads, you're always compressing a little bit to create that connection. So from here, we have the first line of the basic. One, two, on three, I start to open away, and four, I create the space. So I'm doing an opening away from this basic, creating the pressure. It also allows us to separate and slightly settle in our midweight for our bodies. Now, I'm going to leave the first part of the body roll, and it's going to start at the top of my top line. I'm going to use my hand, and I'm just going to move my hand up. I'm not going to pull her. I'm going to just lift the hand up as I go forward. So it's one, two, three, goes off to the side, four, finishes the weight transfer. So it's done in four counts. So again, we're over here. So we have one, two, three, four. Once I get comfortable doing it in four counts, I'm good. So again, we have a basic. One, two, open, touch. And then we have one, two, three, four. On three, I change weight. On four, I touch it yet. That way I'm ready to do my basic. That's going to be our breakdown, more or less. All right, let's go through this leader's footwork. So we're doing a side basic here. We have a step together, side and slightly back, and touch. Leading the body roll for one, two, three, shifting my weight to my right foot, tap for four. Then I can come out of the normal base, one, two, three, tap, right? So again, I'm just doing side together, back to the side, tap, lead the body roll for one, two, three, shifting my weight to my right foot, Four is my tap. Free to move on from there. It's fairly simple. It's more about connection than footwork here. All right, fellows. So here's what we're doing for this pattern. So we have our uh, regular basic. So we're going up to our right for one, two. When we get to this three and then our tap for four, we're going to feel a little bit of pressure for our right hand and a lessening of pressure for on the hand that's on our shoulder blade. And so we're going to go ahead and just seat that hand that's on our shoulder blade, and that's going to create a little bit of space between us and our partner. So by the time we get to three, and then this tap, there will be a little bit of space between us and our partner, which will you know, give us space to do this body roll. Okay? So, as we do this body roll, we're going to continue to feel this hand on our back and let that do most of the direction here. And we'll feel it pushing on us, and then we'll feel it start to go back away. And so we'll do this body roll motion, which we'll go more in depth later in key points. But as we feel that, we're going to go forward and then go up. And then for this body roll, we have this natural settling action where we settle back into our hips and kind of get back to, to where we started from. But this time, so we have this one, two, and so we're about in the middle by the time we get to two, 
And then as we settle, we're going to go ahead and shift our weight three, four. And so that gets us ready to continue with our basic again to the right. Okay, so I want to make sure that we get where this change of weight happens. Because it, it, with this particular set, we're going to be going to the right twice, which is a little bit different from what we've been doing. All right, so if we have this one, two, three, touch, we've gotten some room now, and we're just settling in to that hand. We're keeping our knees bent as we do throughout this whole um, dance, keeping our knees soft, kind of sort of settling back into that hand, and then we'll be going forward, up for one, two, and then as we settle, three, four, we've got that change of weight, and then we're ready to go back to one, two, three, four. Go back into our base. All right, so that's the basics of what we're doing, especially with our footwork for this and we're going to change into a way up. All right, let's get into some key points. Key points time. All right, so the trick about body rolls is it looks one way where it led and followed another. A lot of times people feel like, especially in the chapter, that it's overly manipulating the follow. And this is not a skeletal or biomechanic manipulation. This is really a lead and follow uh, trait. Uh, it's about a little bit of counterbalance into the, the, the pressures of the, the connection. And it's about how you establish your connection and keep it throughout the dance, which keeps the follow's mind open, keeps the lead not wrecking the follow's body. Uh, this stuff should be able to be done regardless if you're a baby dancer all the way up to uh, you've been dancing for a long time and you should be able to be able to do this with your body when you're much, much older. Uh, so the trick with this mechanic, just being in a closed position, starting off here, we want to have a little bit of a rounded back, that way we have a little bit of counterweight here. So we want to feel that connection there. That automatically puts us softer in our knees and it makes us more able to feel these changes of weight. And that's really what we're looking for here. As soon as the follow starts to stand up more tall and become more slightly forward, immediately lose any contact. So now I do have to grab their body. And that's why you do see a lot of people grab shoulders or grab more of the core to manipulate because they don't have uh, the, the wherewithal to connect properly. So I think what happened was that became a normal thing. And instead of taking time to learn technique, we're seeing people skip taking time to learn and embed it in themselves, and they go straight to grabbing and manipulating, because that's the shortcut to it, which, yeah, you can do it quicker that way, but you're not prepping yourself for longevity. And we want to be able to do this until we're 80, 90, and 100, hopefully, 100 body loads. Um, but this all starts out with having a nice connection here. So we sink our weight slightly to the ground, we're slightly rounded with our connection, and then we have our, our lead hand, we have a little bit of a little bit of compression here. So, I would start talking now with just doing some changes of weight. That way you feel the pressure in both hands and on the back. Now once you have that, once you finish changing your weight, go ahead and change your weight here on the side. We still want to feel like we have some pressure in the hand. That way we need to start in a prep position and then we can go body roll and then shift the weight. Now you can do body rolls just in place. You don't have to shift the weight. You can just have a body roll from this position here. And we use this by connecting, um, having this compression here and there. So we're, we're set up, and then we have top line as well as hand. Now if you watch my hand, what you're gonna see me do is more go up and down. So my hand is on her shoulder blade. So once we're in a prep position, when my hand comes up, the pressure naturally goes up her body. So it's gonna go down the top line. That's why you see this being reflected. Then now, once we finish this top line, it's going to go away from her. So she's going to see, set her shoulder binding my hand. So her shoulder's going to go looking for my hand. And then as my hand comes down, she's going to settle her weight into that hand. So really, it's about seeking where that hand is, and she's kind of feel that out. So follows, guys or girls, when you're following, you want to put your shoulder into the hand and follow where the lead's hand is going. And that's going to actually protect your body weight instead of having the spinal manipulation stuff. Uh, leads, you're literally doing up and down, or you're doing a little bit of this. You're kind of shaping like this, kind of like a paddle. But you are not grabbing them and pulling them forward, pushing, you're not manipulating every action. So I'm not literally trying to make her do this kind of stuff. 
that's really uncomfortable down the road, and it's too fast to react to. But if she's putting some weight there, they are putting some weight there, all I have to do is I go up, then that top line goes up. If I bring the hand away from her, she sinks her weight into it, and then as she settles out, that's where my hand's going to be. So I don't even have to be using the visual cue. Now, it's nice to have a visual cue where the lead is doing it too, so you have some tempo as well, and you can see what you're matching. But it doesn't have to be that way. The lead can kind of stay put. He can separate away and then leave this, and then he can come in on the top line if he wants to. That's a little bit later. <laughs> but the simple one, again, is we have a basic, we have our connection, right? We're, we're pushing into each other. And we have one, two, three, four. I created that space which gives us that connection here. And then we have five, six, seven, eight. Now, I always prefer follows have a little bit more of the accentuation of the body roll, and that leads to a little bit less, but it, it doesn't have to be that way. It leads, you can put in as much of body roll as you want. I just like to think that if it compromises your structure or you're, you're thinking about it too much, you might not lead so well because you're thinking more about you than the follow. And the lead and follow dynamic is that the lead usually should be providing structure and balance and support, and the follow is the one providing the aesthetic and the uh, timing and the stretching and all of this bit. So you can do as much of that as you can on top of that part, but again, that's your own stylistic choice to play with. But yeah, play with some body rolls and get a chance to play with that. Um, also, uh, a little drill you can do for the body roll right now is get used to moving your top line forward, right? Try to isolate that rib cage going forward and back. Right? And then up and down. So you want to have forward, neutral, and back. And then you want to have up and down. If you have those different shapes, that's essentially what you're trying to do with a body roll. So you're trying to go forward and then bring the shoulders back and then down. That's how you're getting those, those shapes. Forward. Up is the shoulders coming back, then back, down. Get that kind of shape down. Play with those isolations if you feel stiff or that your vertebrae aren't individually moving. It feels like all one piece. But we'll, uh, the more you do it, the more comfortable we get. And that's whether it's a step or if it's a body roll, it doesn't matter what it is, the more we practice that. So play with those because this is going to be something that grows a lot in my child. Okay, those are a few points. All right, let's go ahead and demonstrate this. We're going to do a real-time speed so you can kind of see what you're going to be aiming for once this gets more comfortable. Now, don't forget with musicality, you can always do it slower and stretch it out. Uh, you don't always have to come in on the one. As long as you're coming down on the one or the five, you're coming in at a more appropriate phrase. That way you won't be completely off phrase. You don't have to come in on the eight counts. You can just come in on the one or the five. And that, that's perfectly acceptable with a child. But you can go an even fours for your body roll, or you can take eight counts, uh, whatever you like. Just try to step out on the one or the five if you're listening to the music. In this demonstration, we're going to do it in four counts. That way, we keep it uh, pretty square. That way, you're coming off of your basic on the one, and then uh, you'll kind of see it from there. So, we'll start off here. We'll do one full basic left and right, and then we'll go into it. Ready? And one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that is it for today. Great job. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions, please reach out to us. Give us a call, text, email, or online. Just look us up, Daily Dance Services. And uh, we're more than happy to help you. So yeah, just reach out to us. But we will see you next time.